Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Before starting my video, if you didn't subscribe my channel yet, please do and do not forget to turn on notifications as I'm sharing everyday great contents for you. Alright, in this video, I'm going to start a new playlist and it is going to be about an MVC tutorial project. As promised, we're going to use all basic fundamentals what we learned in our previous playlist and it is going to be all how handmade codes we're not going to use any third-party libraries we're going to use um, how can i say advanced level of basics um c sharp mssql uh, version control systems and asp.net core fundamentals we're going to use all of them basically but as I told you before, we're not going to use any libraries for now. We're going to hone our basic skills. All right. Okay. Um, as a start, I create a new MVC project. You can create easily a new MVC project. And just select the latest framework uh, in this. While I was t taking this video, there is... Um, ASP.NET Core 8.0 released. Now I'm using it right now. Uh, if if you watching this video, of, for example, later time span, um, you can use any framework you want because we're going to use basic. Um, how can I say basic skills? All right. And another thing, I'm not gonna use any architecture, any. Um, design pattern or something because this is going to be a really basic project even though it's going to be a basic project we're going to use advanced level fundamentals okay all right let's create our scenario first i created an excel page okay first of all um it is going to be it is not going to be um, a real project it is it will be a um, tutorial base one let's create our tables first i'm going to create a product table product the second one is going to be category the third one is going to be product features all right then i'm going to show you the authentication and authorization so i need a user I need role and I need user role table. I'm going to explain step by step when it comes when it comes to create these sections. Okay, product. So basically we need an ID. So we need this ID for all of them, right? Let's copy and paste. Alright. So we need a name for product, for category, product feature. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's continue. We need a quantity, we need a price, anything else, it's going to be enough I guess. Category ID and name is enough, product features, we're going to define extra information for products, so like weight, height and let's say color, it is going to be enough as well. Let's continue with user, user must have a full name. A username or let's skip username I'm going to use email instead of username yeah let's say password hash we're going to keep the password in secure format so we have ID full name email password hash for a basic um, for a basic application these three information is going to be enough but when it comes to the our intermediate level project which is already published in my playlist we're going to use identity library but in this project i'm going to i'm not going to, i told you i'm not going to use any library i'm going to build step by step uh, everything in this project because i would like to show you what is the logic behind those libraries how we able to create our own handmade codes then once you learn 
uh, the things and you will able to use library much more efficiently okay let's continue the role we have ID and role name all right use a role this is going to be many to many um, table yeah I guess I'm going to okay let's leave the ID because we it is going to be many to many table I'm going to use a different type of relation okay uh, let's build our relation now I'm going to select a different color uh, let's say red one okay so we need one to many product to category so we need a category ID oops I need red color what's happening we need category ID so every product needs a category ID and a category information so when it comes to category the, the category has to hold the list of the products so I'm going to keep them I collection product all right one to many relation has been created between product and category now I need to create a one-to-one -one relation between product and product feature to do that let's say product feature ID and product feature itself not ID baby all right let's make this section another color let's make it blue uh, so we need to add product ID product itself so let's make it blue every product has a product feature and every product feature has a product so this is how we create our one-to-one -one relation between um, projects okay between tables okay let's continue with the let me have a look user okay uh, so every user can have a role and every the thing is every user can ha can have more than one role so I'm going to make this section many to many so to do that I'm not gonna add anything to user and role I'm going to assign the, um, the roles in another table which is going to be many to many okay so we're going to have a user ID and we're going to have user itself we're going to role ID and role itself so let's make this section another color let's make it green oh we need to add collections to the user and role we forgot to add them I let's copy from here control C control V control V let's add our user role okay perfect if you remember many to many con uh, relations between tables so we create one to many connection another table so it becomes many to many so it is many to many basically all right this is our scenario we're going to use these tables we're going to create these tables all right let's jump to the coding section and let's create our entities this is our project yep here we go so we have a model here let's clean unnecessary control and models let's I'm going to delete this home control I'm going to create my own controllers let's delete this one let's go to weaves let's delete this home as well anything else share it 
I'm not gonna use error CSS HTML. Perfect. Let's leave everything like that. Let's create our own entities at class. Start with product. All right. Let me zoom in a bit more for you guys. Perfect. Let's start with id prop string the second is name the third one is let's have a look quantity price quantity let's use decimal and price all right let's create other entities first then we can create the relations between each other okay let's create another class product features prop integer id prop string height prop string weight prop oops prop string color yep color all right let's continue with the category prop integer id prop string name all right by the way i'm going to create a new folder here let's make it a little bit tidy let's give a name entity let's put old entities in entity folder and i want my application i'm on my visual studio change the namespace automatically let's have a look okay it, it's changing automatically to entity folder all right perfect let's continue with uh, let's create the relation first let's add now hop category let's category id first let's do category id first category id prop category category okay i would like to point out something important now we are going to use entity framework core right so to assign these relation between tables as you can see we have a category table category entity here and i'm going to use category id this name format is really important to create um table relations okay if you add for example like this category id or another thing another type of name for holding to holding category id you have to specify relation in um configuration settings but if you if you use this format all always the entity framework recognize your format and it is going to make an automatic relation between your tables i'm always using automatic um how can i say um, the automatization but when it comes to a special format or special relations between tables you have to use how can i say special relations yeah you uh, by the way you can let's have a look at our entity framework core documentation type here and ef core documentation all right let's have a look our results let me see is there any page about entity framework core learn for example you can use this page yeah you can use this page guys a lot of 
information located here for example there is a configuration you can look configurations here yep here we go one to many one to one many to many relationship you can find out every detail located in this page okay now i'm going to use automated one all right so i'm using category id for relation between category okay i assume you understand the format of names okay let's continue the category so we need to add i collection of product and the name is going to be products let's continue with the product feature public integer product feature id prop product feature product feature perfect let's get back here now it is going to be one to one so we're going to add product of oh, sorry prop integer product id prop product product all right perfect let's save it there are many ways to creating one-to-one -one connections relations but i'm showing you the easy understandable one as i told you before you can go into the framework core page web page and you can have a look how uh, you can create your connections between tables all right let's continue with users at class users prop integer id if you type here as i told you before if you type your user id you have to you have to define this user id is going to be primary k all right this is what i'm talking you should use id for the id of your entity then entity framework can recognize this ID will be the primary key. Okay. Prop string email. Prop string. What was the other one? Full name. Prop string password hash. All right, perfect. Let's create our role section. Prop integer ID. Prop string role name. All right, let's add our user role. So we're going to add user ID. So it's going to it's going to be integer. User ID. Prop user. User. Prop integer. Role ID. Roll, roll. All right, let's add our many sections. Prop I collection user roll and prop I collection. What is the yeah, user role? user role user roles yeah we forgot to add user roles perfect 
all right so everything is ready right now let's save our project all right um anything else should i do here entity is completed now we're going to create our db context what is that db context <clears throat> so we i told you before we're going to use entity framework core as an orm tool this orm tool needs use uh how can i say use a db context file to access our database so it does the connection and it's you can you can think db context file as a door between your application and database okay let's create a new folder here db context or just say context context okay let's create a class now and I'm going to give a custom context. Okay, this is our customized context. And we're going to use an inheritance from DB context, which is you're not able to find it right now because this DB context class comes from Entity Framework Core. Once you click Control dot and it is it will guide you install package Microsoft Entity Framework Core and you can find an install latest version okay here we go let's click this one and install our Entity Framework Core here we go we bring our DB context let's have a look which version of EF Core has been installed package the current version is 804 so this is what we installed let's continue now okay now i'm going to create constructors the empty one don't, want, don't forget to make a public and i'm going to add the options one so while i'm adding the options one if i add an option like SQL string connection in my program CS file I need to send this option to the base context to DB context okay this is this is why we creating those constructors once we created this one we need to create the empty one for the for our um, for our custom context all right now let's create our tables DB let's say prop and we're going to set db set class which is going to be product for product for a best practice we always setting table names with the plurals products okay let's change it to category categories product Features, product features, users, oops, users, users, role and roles. user role user roles okay um, normally it is enough to create our tables but we can give our SQL connections in this section or we can create an extension of program CS file to make it much more best practice let's see both of them and I'm going to show how how we can configure our properties. To do that, um, overwrite I guess if I remember correctly. 
we have two override method on configuration and on model creating okay first of all um, let's use on configure on configurating let's delete base section let's add options builder dot use sql connection as you can see there is nothing came up because we didn't we didn't add entity framework sql let's control dot is there anything comes up nothing okay let's go nuget manage packet manager now we're going to define our sql connection let's browse entity framework sql let's wait all right here we go entity framework core sql server let's install and then we able to use our connection okay let's close it hopefully is that SQL connection is that use SQL server ah is that yeah it is use SQL server but it is using entity um, the same let's see the package SQL so we you need to install SQL server yeah use SQL server and SQL server all right perfect how can we add our use uh, our connection let's see the parameter it is asking us an action delegate or a string connection string okay we can give our connection string directly here for now just i'm typing a random text connection string we, we're going to fill later this connection string okay okay just consider this is our co connection string okay let's continue with the other overwrite method on model creating so you can if you remember I told you you can define your table and property settings in this overwrite on model creating so how can you do that let's have a look and investigate what we have here model builder dot okay you can select your entity for example product okay and you can define everything uh, related to your database here so entity product for example has let's say has let's have a look for example if you would like to add a seed data you can add has data and open your bracket let's say new product okay and you can come inside you can add your data as you can see all properties here okay uh, should be supposed to add some seed data okay let's add some data to work with them okay um, for example let's say ID must be one let's say category let's say name is brick let's say price is 15.25 just random number should I use dot yeah dot why should I do then so what is the problem the decimal all right 2.5 no 2.5 what is the problem hmm so we do we need to define is a decimal what is what is telling us double decimal a comma, um, double cannot be to convert to type decimal use m suffix to create do to this time hmm it is asking us to use m perfect okay let's continue with category oops no category id category ID let's say one but we didn't create yet 
let's say product feature ID let's say one as well quantity is 15 all right so once we migrate our database we going to see it a data to our database now I'm going to create a category and product feature because we add a product feature and quantity uh, category ID here model builder dot of oh, not you model builders entity category has data new category ID must be exactly one because we add this ID here to our product and name has construction construction all right all done let's add another data for let's have a look we need a product feature right let's type here product feature product feature we need a weight is that integer oh, why we gave string let's get back our entity and fix the integer to the another type of to the type where is my feature yeah here we go so I'm gonna give so should I give double let's give double it's enough yeah let's save it let's get back here so it must be a double right let's type for example 1.5 perfect let's give height um, 0 0.55 to random numbers all right anything else should I add here so we need to give a product ID and it belongs to product ID one here we go perfect all right um, let's continue with the connection string I assume you understand how we are using model builder okay you can add another thing as well let me show you um, another example for example let's go to entity product okay product and for example you would like to give a restriction to your property click the property and should I yeah let's give a property name the property name should I give yeah for example quantity okay quantity I select the quantity for example has you can give restriction here let's have a look column type command conversion max length yeah you can give max length for example has max, 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 um, max length for example 5 so once if you give a length more than 5 to your quantity you're going to get an error message which is going to be comes from DB context blah 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 exception okay this is how you can give restriction to your properties let's change for example to the name okay so if you would like to give a name to your any properties belong to your product if you type here for example 25 the maximum length of your string has to be 25 or else you're going to get error message this is how we are using this model builder in our DB context all right let's let's keep it here as well okay I'm going to show you once we created our migration perfect then I'm going to show you the best practices of how we can add our 
how can I say configurations I'm not gonna make it long this is going to be a basic tutorial project I'm gonna make it small but I'm going to show you step by step um, every detail in this section okay as you can see if I would like to add too many seats too many um, how can I say property too many settings in my configurations this page will be really long and unreadable so according to the solid principles we need to keep our classes simple and we need to give them just one purpose now our db context create our tables keep connection strings and keep the configuration so we can manage them okay let's add our connection string first and then we're going to refactor it how i'm going to show you the best practice method okay let me have a look how can i get my connection string the easy way for me i'm going to copy and paste from my previous project but if you're creating any one let's go to internet and let's say let's have a look St connection strings connection strings type your connection strings all right let's connect to where is the sql server where is the sql server i can't see my sql sql server here we go so we going we need dot net framework data provider sql i guess this is what we need sql server ah this is sql server yeah okay server this is standard security this is trusted connection okay uh server name database name trusted connection is true is it going to be enough let me have a look i guess there is one more extra setting here but i'm gonna copy it for now and let's see if we get an error message i'm trying to fix it okay let's paste this here first of all okay my server address how can we find our server address let's open your sql server yep now we're going to get our server address first i'm waiting my computer to open my sql okay let's connect once you connect it right click on your server properties and copy your the name of your server all right let's close it we can use this as server address database let's give mvc project tutorial okay trusted connection is true let's leave it like that as i told you before if we get an error we can come back here and fix the errors okay so our db context is completed for now what else do we need to add i'm just thinking we didn't add configuration i'm going to make a refactoring okay let's try to make a migration and let's see the error messages we're going to get a lot of error messages for now but i want you to see them okay click your package manager console okay let's type here at dash migration let's give a name this migration let's say initial let's answer we have an error message so what is the problem then as you can see add migration couldn't recognize so we need to add first of all a library a third-party library which is going to be named 
EF core tools. Alright. It came automatically at the top of my list anyway. Let's click it and install tools guys. Okay. Because if you didn't add your tools extension, your package manager console didn't recognize your commands. Now let's add it. As you can see, we will continue to the next step. I'm waiting. Build started. You're going to get another error message right now. I'm expecting at least. Build succeed. Here we go. Unable to create DB context of that, the exception, blah blah blah. Dependent site couldn't be determined for the one to one relation between product feature, product, and product feature. And hmm. So we have an, an error, the product feature section. I guess we did something wrong here. Let's have a look first. Our relations. Let's get back our entity. Okay, product feature ID, product, hmm, okay, so this is what we did wrong here, so we didn't, we, we are not supposed to add the feature ID section, and it must be nullable, okay, so what I did here, so product feature, so every product may have a product feature, so this is an optional section, if we add it, okay, so this product feature has a product ID and product. Let's run the our manage console. If we get any error, we're going to define the connection between these two feature, okay, to entity. Let's type again. Will fail. Do we have any problem here? Yeah, we have error because we delete product ID from our product feature ID from product so we need to fix our custom DB context we don't have product feature ID anymore here let's delete it let's build the solution first let's see zero failed perfect let's run again okay uh, unable to create blah blah user regular primary care defined the intent to careless enter type okay has no okay okay so we didn't add any primary key here that's that's why we are received this error message it is telling us basically user role has doesn't have any primary key if you would like to use a keyless entity use keyless entity configuration in your db context page so i'm not going to use it let's add a user uh, sorry an id public integer id and public integer id let's leave it okay let's add migration initial one more time it's really great experience to get these exceptions step by step okay enable the create tv content of type blah blah seed entity type of the feature cannot be added because no value was provided the required property color okay so we forget to add color let's get back our db context all right we forget to add color right so that's why we receive error message let's say orange okay perfect let's add migration initial one more time all right um we created our migration file. Let's investigate what we created. First of all, we have a categories table. We have roles table, users table, products table, user roles, and products feature. And the data sheet is located here. Okay, let's update dash database to push this information to our SQL server. 
we're going to get another error message I think yep perfect a connection was established with the server but an error occurred during the login process this is the error message yeah if you're using .NET 6 or .NET 6, you won't you won't get an error message. But this .NET 7 and 8 has another parameter I told you before um, in our con connection string. To do that, I'm going to open my previous projects and I'm going to get the connection string from there. Okay, let's have a look. This is the address, trust connection true, yeah, trusted server certification true, do not forget add this parameter, okay, perfect, let's add it here, alright, let's update database one more time. Because we still have our, okay. So applying migration done. It is completed. Let's have a look at our migration. Migration is completed now. Okay, now I'm going to open my MS SQL. Refresh my database. Okay. The name of what is the name of our database? Um I forget the name of our database. Okay, let's have a look. MVC project tutorial. MVC MVC project tutorial. Here we go. This is our database. Let's have a look. Tables, categories. Let's have a look. Design. No, not design. Sorry. Let's close it. At the top 200 rows. As you can see, we add construction data as well. Project pro features. This is our features. Let's have a look at our products. This is our product, roles, and users, all of them here. If you remember, we add a restriction to our products. Let's have a look design section. As you can see, name section comes with N bar chart 25. What is that 25? This is exactly comes from our Um, configuration comes from has max length 25 you can add as many as configuration using this model builder property okay let's get back our SQL server now and uh, let's have a look at our database diagram and let's see if everything is correct I mean the relations are correct or not let's add all of them and let's have a look perfect user role has users and roles as you can see one too many one too many and it means many too many this is how we're creating many too many okay this is products categories and product features as you can see one to one connection and the, for the categories one too many connection all connection has been set right now Okay, by the way, if you would like to make some much more easier and less properties, you can have a look how you can create your one-to-one -one or many-to-many -many connection. There are a few different ways to create your relations. This is the easiest and basic way to create our relations between our tables. Okay, let's close SQL Server just for now. Let's, yes. Okay, let's save it. Perfect. So in this lesson, we created our entities and we created our DB context and configurations. Uh, it's been, it, this lesson become a really long one. Uh, actually, I would like to show the refactoring first and let's find, then I'm going to finalize the lesson. Okay, um, now let me create a new folder here, configuration. Okay, I'm going to create a new class, new class, let's say for example product, product, if I able to write here, product, config, okay, 
so I'm going to inheritance from I entity type configuration let's edit for product add implement interface perfect now I'm going to add entity type configuration for my product entity and uh, once I implement my interface okay let's delete this one let's delete this one all I need to use this property builder dot okay now I have everything in my hands like has data same as model builder okay property okay let's add property configuration we add name right and has max length must be the 25 perfect now you can go back to context section and you can delete your where is the yeah you can delete your configuration here perfect so we make separate okay let's add let's add our has data so you can also add your builder dot has data I'm just copy and paste from this section yep all done now let's copy all of them and change the we can amend the names so we're going to build it instead of the whole section but this for category and product feature right let's delete it it's my bad okay we need to create another classes product feature config i entity type configuration product features here we go let's implement interface not you let's add our product feature here now so we're going to use builder uh, instead of this whole entity name here we go there is no issues font all right let's create the same class for category config all right category config i entity type configuration for category let's implement interface let's copy this section use builder instead of model builder category perfect it's now we can delete this whole model builder section so you now have to use both of method okay let's create an extension method to use our our SQL server okay a connection string which is another best use methods the folder extensions at new class let's say let's say load configurations or load services 
and configurations. Or just services and configurations. Okay. So I'm going to make a static class to make an extension of my program CS file. To create one, we're going to create a method, static method, return i service collection. Okay. Load or just say, yes, say load services and configs. All right, so to enable fluent type of adding data using this parameter i service collection services and for the future, if we had the configuration, I'm going to add i configuration as well. Config. Okay. So return type is going to be services. Perfect. Now we are able to add our services in this extension file. Okay. How can add my how can add my let me have a look my context where is my db context this is my db context let me off let's save everything and close all tabs it's really messed here okay let's have a look our context okay we have a connection here right so i'm going to add the connection string here but before that i will show you the how can I say another method located in program CS file, which is not best practice one, then we will refactor it to edit our extension method. Okay, let's add builders dot add db context. Sorry, services services dot add db context. Our context name is custom context. All right. Let's, as you can see, we are using action delegate here. Option. Let's use option. Use SQL server. This is where we can add our connection string. And as you can see, we have, we have a constructor here, right? So we sending our options and we send it to base options this is where we assign this option here in program cx file yeah this is option and we send this option parameter to our custom db context construction and it is sent to main db context construction as an option perfect i assume you understand now okay um let's finalize this section okay there is no issues for you can add your connection uh, with this way and you can delete it so your db context file only keeps your entities but now your program cs file become longer so we just add one services but just imagine this is a big project you're going to add 50 or 40 different services it is going to be long now i'm going to take this section okay i'm going to take this section and add it to my extension method let's take services all right services at db context and everything is added all we need to add these services to our program says file just one time okay let's edit builder dot services dot load what is the name of our method services and configs right load services and configs so what is the problem it couldn't recognize it let's add the namespace then Let's get back here using sometimes it happens 
let's see. Yep, it's now ready to go. So it is asking us a configuration. So we add our configuration as a parameter here as well. So it's ready. What it is going to be read it from here. What we add in our static file of extension. Okay, let's at our entity framework core to use SQL server now everything is ready there is another best practice method here we can read this connection from upsetting JSONs. okay so how we can do that let's copy let's cut this section okay all we need to do is uh let me have a look so we need to use the configurations right let's use conf config parameter comes from here i've configuration let's add get section or get connection string yeah let's use get connection string the connection string name is sql connection okay so what is this what is this sql connection what is this configuration what is this method this get connection string is ready method comes from upsetting jsons okay so all we need to do is use a comma here oops it's my bad what, what i've done here okay put a comma here Let's add a connection string. As you can see, it came automatically. Let's double click it. All right. And let's create an SQL connection parameter here. SQL connection. Now let's paste your, oops, did we lost our connection string? Okay. I'm going to use control Z to get back my connection string. Okay, let's control C and let's put it forward again. Perfect. Let's get the application settings. Control V. Let me have a look. Is there any problem? It seems, yeah, let's delete this one. Oops. Okay, we add our connection string here, but what's happening? Okay, all right. But once you copy, there is your slashes is duplicated. Let's delete it. Make sure these these are going to be just two of them, and we can delete this one as well. Let's delete this comma. Okay. Let's check everything. This connection string. This is database. Yep. Yeah trust connections had to be to the perfect it seems everything is perfect right now so what's not what's gonna happen is our first of all our service and configs will be loaded then we will come here my ATB context will work here and we're going to get connection string from my SQL connection which is comes from my how can I say upsetting JSON? Okay, this is how we can get our SQL connection from our upsetting JSON. All right, I forgot to mention one thing. Okay, we add our configuration here, but we didn't add them into our custom context. We forgot to mention something. Uh, let's overwrite one more time on model creating okay we need to give our configuration to do that model builders dot apply configuration from assembly assembly dot get execution assembly what is the problem here 
assembly dot get executing assembly must be work here yeah so this is the thing we need we created our configuration classes right so we need to assign them in our context so to do that we all we need to do, give the assembly name which is the assembly name is youtube asp.nego tutorial basic and i'm just basically telling my method get all configuration file comes coming from this assembly so this three configuration will be applied okay let's save everything i'm going to delete my migration okay to try one more time to see if it's everything is working or not let's open my mssql server and i'm going to delete the database as well to run one more time this lesson become really long but i didn't want to interrupt it the database mvc project tutorial let's delete it close existing connections okay all right let's migration again let's wait will succeed yep here we go let's update migration oh sorry update database it's my fault <laughs> database let's continue let's see here we go the seed is being done all right it's done let's have a look quickly refresh our database this is mvc project tutorial tables here we go everything is here again it is up to 100 rows everything is here again one more time let's have a look at our database diagrams new database diagram let's add one more time all of them perfect it is working one to one one to many and many to many it's working all right guys i'm going to finish this lesson here it's it's been a really long lesson i assume you understand what we've done here step by step we, we will move forward um and other features on next lesson take care yourself see you on next lesson bye bye